Art making is a primal form of expression of the human species that does not need to be learned, and it has survival function that most of us are unaware of. History is, is about creativity. It's creativity in thought, creativity in action. It's all about creativity. Making a creative work is something that is from the brain and body, which includes perception and input from other sources. Spontaneous is surrendering rational control, relaxing it, and just entering a space where you really don't know what is going to come forth. And you begin a painting and you just start with maybe the color blue and you put the blue on the canvas and then you say, okay, what's going to happen next? And then you just intuitively choose another color. And very slowly you enter into this process that is not rational and you just feel into the colors and they kind of come, you, you, they whisper to you, oh, pick me, I'm red. And, and you do. And then they, they start to form shapes and then emotions start to come. And then you unleash this self-directional principle, which is taking you to access your deeper levels of awareness and this, this code inside of you that you were born with, or this other dimension of consciousness that lives inside of each person, this inner light, this authentic being. It's about coming to understand the different layers of individuality and uh, inner imagination and uh, how that manifests in your world. What are your unique gifts and how can you make them come alive in everyday life? Before, I was always thinking if I draw something or if, if I paint something, I'm going to paint this. I had an idea. But now to be in front of a white paper, a big white paper, and just feel what was inside, well, the example of non-judgment myself, and just to start to paint, to put color and to organize it like that, with other people who were doing the same thing I was doing, because usually when somebody paint, when I was painting a little, I was always alone, but now we were in group, and the energy of the group was uh, helping me to uh, to do some things, to create something. Start a painting with your fingers without using the paintbrush or a sponge. Whatever way you want to express right now, this force of creation, you might want to start writing and then go into a painting whatever feels right for you. As a whole, I guess this whole course has been pretty cathartic. For me, it's like healing and it's just very emotional, which I didn't, not typically that way either. So it's kind of, you know, you're with a bunch of strangers and you like pour out all your <laughs> emotions and energies. It's sort of bizarre in a way. I've never, ever really had the um, platform to just spontaneously paint whatever I want of how I'm feeling. I don't know, a lot of them come from like deeper emotions that I'm probably feeling. I think that comes from the meditation or from conversations or what's going on in my life. It probably was some sort of like healing thing because I always think when I'm really upset or deeply, deeply heartbroken or upset about something, I choose to paint. It's really healing for me. I don't know. So. Mm. Hey, you don't have to know. <laughs> no, it's true. You don't. You really don't. Because whatever you did, you unleashed, and it has an effect. So the deeper you go inside yourself, the deeper you get to this other level of, of uh, wisdom or knowing. And you access it. You express it. You bring it forth. You unleash it in the symbols. And then they begin to uh, influence your behaviors and your thoughts. First, people generally paint their darker feelings, their pain. And when that level of the unconscious 
is expressed in spontaneous painting and unleashed. That allows for deeper levels within us, such as our higher self or our light, or other connections to a higher power, as you'll see when I show you the progression, to start to express. But in the beginning, we do express these feelings of anger. And if I would be walking or with friends, walking down the street or with friends, and somebody would say to me, how do you feel today? I could never tell them exactly what I was feeling. But when I painted this, being devoured, I could never say, well, you know, I'm being devoured by a monster and there's just this rage inside of me. It just didn't come out in the words, but I was able to express it in the paintings. Many teachers and many artists themselves often start just with scribbling, just taking a crayon or a pencil and scribbling on a piece of paper. And this sort of unites the perception and the motor expression, develops eye-hand coordination, and once somebody is comfortable with the scribbling and the rehearsal, then that can gradually spin off into something that takes form. Again, it's making order out of chaos. So scribbling and spontaneous painting and even um, using finger painting in doing murals and doing artwork are a very important part of this type of creativity because they can be important rehearsals and important loosening devices and opening up somebody to input that maybe they didn't have before. After all, what we know is largely out of our awareness. It's what is called the unconscious. And to be creative, we sometimes have to dip into this and resurrect memories, things you haven't thought of for years, and also the combination of memories, as you have in dreams, where memories are coalesced and put together without us even knowing about it consciously, to create a dream which in and of itself we might call a creative act, with all of its metaphors, all of its symbols, all of its sights and sounds, and even colors from time to time. This process allows you, for whatever the time frame is, to get a sense of relief. When you get through all the negativities, you reach that core part of yourself that's really peace, that's really love, that's really compassion. So you become that. And that's what we need to create. We need to create human beings that are loving and compassionate and joyful. Because when you connect with your real self, it's just joyful. You can wake up in the morning and say, hey, I'm great to be alive. You know, you can be grateful for everything. That's my own experience. Yes, I definitely see, even hear myself saying, like, I feel, I think, I definitely hear myself even saying that more often now. And before, I wouldn't. Oh, there's a phrase that I, that I enjoy, and that is, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And through an experience like this, it would, be, um, it would be beneficial to me as a teacher, as well as my students, to be able to make an emotional connection with them or to just validate their emotional state at that time. I've recognized so many things um, during the course of this class. And you cannot, I've also learned, you cannot change what you can't see. You can't, if you're not aware of something, you cannot change it. If you're not conscious of different things, whether it's within you or outside, you can't make much of a difference. So I would definitely say that the awareness that I've gained um, has been very, very helpful. Even with as far as being judgmental and critical, <laughs> um, those are things that I struggle. One of the greatest things about this class was the readings, the supplemental readings that we had. I really enjoyed the readings about listening. It's something that I have to work on and it really it really struck a chord with me. Uh, sensitive paraphrasing and empathetic uh, listening is really important. I actually photocopied the articles and I have them in my walls and I've even given them to friends and ex-boyfriends. So because to listen and to really listen is something that I've never really been taught. And this class from day one 
when we sat in a circle and we had to just paraphrase what that person just said and not judge and not give advice and not relate it to anything else, to not analyze it, but to just listen and give back what that person has said to you is touching and it's a whole new level that people don't learn in everyday classrooms. I've never learned that in my life, you know, really empathetic listening without, you always are taught or you always think like, oh, I'm going to give this my friend advice or I want to make her feel better or you're going to sugarcoat something or you're going to, you know, maybe, you know, make it personal and bring it back to you, oh, my problems are worse than yours, so don't feel bad. And sometimes you just really need to, that person just wants you to listen and maybe not say anything, but look them in the eye and understand that I, that I see you and I understand and this is how you're feeling. You're feeling sad or you're feeling happy or you're feeling lonely or you're feeling depressed. Is that what you're saying? Is that how you're feeling? And it can, you know, change that person's whole day. What I learned from being with other people doing the painting is that together we were able to unlearn some of the negativity and bad habits that we had running around in our heads. That we had a choice. We had a choice to just stop, sit down, write, um, take a walk, sit by a tree, uh, you know, paint, not paint, depending on what was going on in the class. And I, and I think we learned and I learned that if they can be more patient with themselves through this process, then why can't I be more patient with myself? And it was just really, it was awesome to, to watch other people. It was awesome. It was just um, to see the transformation happen in front of me. To train people to, to tackle the planet that we have now, we need people who are fully developed in themselves, have the skills to communicate and work with one another so they can create these cultures of peace that is so lacking in our planet today. One of the goals, I think, of education should be to find out what intelligence each student has talent in and have an opportunity for that talent to blossom. They need some place for spontaneous expression, clearly, because that's Children learn through playing, they learn through painting, they learn through music, and they learn through art. And it's very sad that we're getting squeezed into this very narrow cognitive model that only, only develops a very small portion of the person. They don't understand that when people begin to connect to who they truly are and access their divine light, that they get in touch with a life purpose, and life takes it, life is just relate. We relate to each other on a different level, of um, embodying our spiritual awareness, our creative awareness, our emotional awareness, imagination, and people right now are just. It's like we're an eight-cylinder car, and we're just operating from one cylinder, and we have all these other potentials of the mind, and we're not using them. When access to the unconscious through art is taken out of the schools, we pay a very important price for that because we're cutting children off from some of their deep inner resources, resources that can be used for their survival in terms of emergencies, or that can be used to take culture forward in terms of inventions, in terms of new artistic styles. If we can integrate the exquisite intelligence of the heart and the mind into a whole brain learning curriculum, and if we can implement this into our society, if we can find schools that are willing to offer this curriculum, educational policy makers that will implement this as social policy, funding for this kind of education, if we can teach this to one student at a time, one teacher at a time, one school at a time, and one university at a time, then we will begin to create a morphic field of social change. You gradually begin to unfold, and the more beautiful parts begin to emerge. 
You know that that song, The Garden? Can I sing The Garden? Yes, go ahead. Come into the garden, its magical tree. Gather the sun as they sway with each lazy breeze. We'll put your mind at ease. Pretend you're a child with nothing to hide. Then we'll join hands and let the universe swing 